now it's uh, time for human capital. It's a very, very important topic we didn't touch on yet enough. And that is why uh, one of our sponsors, uh, Konrad S. from Mannheim, I used to go to the University of Mannheim. I'm very proud that we have green power now in Mannheim. And he also was doing uh, recruiting and personnel development in the IT world. Yep. And now you are in the green world. Yes, that's true. Please share your vision for the future, how we can bring more people to the green economy. I think as um, most of you know uh, from the news today that uh, one of the uh, Fukushima things seems to um, to go off right now and um, I think that's one of the reasons why the things that Jan and Julian did to bring all these people here together to bring all the brains um, together for uh, developing and putting out the green technology ideas um, is a very important thing thank you Jan for doing that everybody who has who has uh, written a business plan yet knows, okay, we got to uh, take a look. What's the market like? And where can we get some money from? And how, how is the environment to, to get money? And of course, um, yeah, where can we get the right people? And the one thing a lot of people tell me, well, uh, Conrad, you are with green technology stuffing, you stepped into a great niche. But if we look at the numbers, the share of green tech in the gross domestic product uh, in Germany was 8% in 2007. And it's predicted to grow to 14% in uh, 10 years' time. So when we look at that and we compare it to other industries, um, and we see that car production is 3.4% uh, of gross domestic product, uh, banking 3.1%, construction industry 3.4, I would like to say we're, we're not in a niche anymore. You know, that's one of the biggest markets right now. And uh, I can't hear that, that thing of the green niche anymore. It's here and, and we're, uh, it's, it's a great industry and it's a growing industry. I've been in Switzerland four weeks ago also as a speaker. And uh, in Switzerland, they have about 4.5% of all employees are in green tech now. And uh, they have 3.5% of their gross domestic product in clean tech. And that's about the same numbers as uh, it's as big as the uh, tourism industry in Switzerland. So if I would come up with the idea to say I build a hotel in, uh, in Zurich, um, would anybody say to me, oh, that's a great niche? Um, so please let's end this niche discussion. It is that big because uh, we're always talking about renewables, we're talking about e-mobility, and green technology is a lot more than that. Closed loop recycling management, I think Germany has about 80% of, uh, of the whole uh, worldwide market with that. Uh, we're so good in sorting waste. If we take a look just at the, at the renewables, uh, we all know that now we have uh, about 10% of our complete energy comes from renewables with annual growth rates over the last 12 years of more than 20%. And you know where we want to go. I always thought we have uh, the target to have 60% in 2050. And uh, Ms. Merkel last Thursday said, uh, yes, now we want to go for 80%. This means for the next 50 years, compound annual growth rate of 16.5%. Um, what a great market to be in. <laughs> yeah. And this is um, at least the 60%. It's almost by law. The government demands that from us. And the big question, and it was, it was, uh, it was answered today uh, by the PV industry, Wind power and photovoltaics, they both uh, declined in the production costs absolutely over the last 18 years. And uh, the industry objective um, for the next 10 years is to decline these costs by another 
And uh, if we keep in mind uh, that we have grid parity for certain PV things already, I think they will pay off. I think this will be a great market for the future. Another thing is e-mobility. The customers demand electromobility. They demand hybrid cars. We know what, what has just come to market over the, over the last two years. The electric mobility, this will be a, uh, also a big growth market. And um, if any of you has children who want to uh, go to university over the next years, um, and they ask, hey, what should I do? What, what, what's the right study? Tell them to go into power electronics. Uh, because um, we got a lot of guys in IT now, uh, but power electronics is something we really have a lack in skills right now. You know, um, if you look at a, at a, at a car, um, who in the automotive industry has experience? What does a 100 kilowatt electrical engine, how to do that in a, in a car? Yeah, we're talking about hybrids. Uh, we're talking about... Uh, hybrid powertrains, we got uh, the, the, the uh, fuel engine and we got the electrical engine and uh, we got less experience uh, in, within the automotive industry how to, combine, how to combine the whole thing. These are the first cars doing that and um, there will be a big learning curve over the next years. So the question, how big is green technology, for me it's it's massive. It's the biggest industry right now. It's bigger than IT. It's bigger than uh, banking. It's bigger than construction industry. So, zooming back, if we had to write a business plan, I think this is, um, we can say, we got the great market for that. If we look at how can we raise money for, for a new company, uh, we have heard over the last two, year, two days uh, China is investing massively into green technology. Um, USA, also a lot of venture capital coming in. In Germany, we are, we are on the right way, I think. Um, and it's predictions over the next 40 years. There's a lot of money being invested. If we look at uh, how much venture capital goes into the whole thing, yeah? In Germany, I think we could do a little bit more. 300 million a year is um, it, it's still a lot, but it, uh, it could be more. And the, uh, the US guys show us um, how much it could be. Uh, latest news is that uh, in January, just in January this year, they were investing 700 million in clean tech. That's more than Germany did over the last year. After the crisis 2008, this, 2009, they stormed back into the whole thing. If you see um, the second quarter 2010, what happens there, how much money went in there. Amazing, amazing. And this is, uh, this is important for Germany because we have to, to, to keep up with them. We have to make technology that we can export tomorrow. On our business plan, I think we have a great market uh, there is access to money, so the question is, how can we look at the, at the skill side, at the people side? And um, these numbers, this is just renewables, the green ones. Yeah? Blue is IT, red is automotive, and uh, over five years, the employment in, in renewables has doubled. So that's uh, also annual growth rate of... 22%. And uh, these are then in uh, wind power, photovoltaics, solar thermics. This is uh, where all these people work now. And interesting is that overall industries, 10% of the employed people have a universal or university of applied science degree. Um, in renewables, it's more than 30%. So this is a very, very um, technical, intensive um, field. Yeah? 
we have to we have to find people, very clever people and educated people for that industry. If we look at engineers, everybody is talking about a lack of, of skilled people. The economy is fine. We say, hey, 35,000 new workplaces for engineers. Great. Unfortunately, 35,000 will go into retirement. That's a big uh, lack and we are, we are managing this lack now with uh, green technology staffing. <laughs> And the question for, for all the, the companies is what to do. How can we attract these people? Because there will be a, a war for these talents. If we say there will be a war of these talents, in my opinion, this will be a real war. And what we saw in 2000 and 1999, 2000, uh, when we said, oh, we have to think about IT green card and all this, that's nothing against that what will happen here. Yeah, and we, have, we also have to think about political uh, solutions for that whole thing. So um, what we have to do is we do have to do international talent management. Um, we are doing that. We just brought, uh, we made a placement of an Argentinian guy who is now working in Rostock. <laughs> One more thing is the whole Generation Y. Um, because, you know, most of us are... Gen X or, or before that, <laughs> and uh, the Gen Y guys are a little bit different. These are the ones when, you, uh, when they come to, uh, to your job interview, many of them come uh, well prepared and uh, they tell you, ah, I've been looking at your website and uh, you should change this and this and this. <laughs> We're dealing with different self-confidence. That's, uh, that's in our society now. The people coming to, to work life now, they, ha they are more self-confident. Do the right things on social media. If you want to attract people, do the right thing. In our company, we are running eight Twitter accounts. We are running three websites, two more are coming, uh, because you have to, to spread your brand out. And don't forget that all these people they are, they are passionate about what they want to do. They are passionate about working in the green economy. And this is what they want to feel when they come to you. One of our things is, uh, this is especially the, the, our initiative for people um, stepping new into the green economy. Uh, we got an initiative giving them these jobs where they don't need green technology experience. As I said, about 40% of our people come through that. If we step back and look again on the, uh, on the, on the agenda, uh, market great, money great, people, I would say be prepared. Do the right things and do it, do it now. Usually, if you write a business plan, first you look at the market, then you look at the money, and the people come last, and uh, this could be too late for you. Nevertheless, if I look at all these people in this room and uh, all the guys that I was talking to through uh, the last two days, um, that makes me really think positive. And I think we can make a difference. We really can change something. That's, I think, if not us, who, and if not now, when, we should start making a difference. Thanks. <laughs>